Hi, everybody. We're going to start by creating a folder that we're going to put everything in. So you should have Visual Studio Code open, and you're going to go to File, Open Folder, and you're going to create a new folder on the desktop or wherever your teacher instructs you to save it. <coughs> and you'll save it with your last name. Mine's Casprack. Once I've created the folder, I'm going to select the folder. And then I can put in a new file, which I'm going to call intro, and it should be all lower cases. I'm actually going to um, do intro caspbrack.html. And it needs that final extension, which stands for hypertext markup language so that it knows that we are, so the Visual Studio knows that we are creating a web development file because it works with a lot of different file types. You don't need the Visual Studio code here though, going through the learn the fundamentals would be very useful for you. Now that we have created our HTML file, we can click on it and start working. There is software called Emmet built into Visual Studio code that lets you do shortcuts. We're going to put in an exclamation point and hit tab. That puts in our basic structure for an HTML file. <coughs> so the first line is your doc type. That's your document type. It's telling our browser that we are using the current version of HTML. Then we have our opening and closing tags, opening tags, are like this, this is our element, this is a property, so it's an HTML document, and we're specifying that the language we're using for the document is English. Then we have a closing tag down here. Most, but not all, tags appear in pairs. For example, doc type doesn't, but most of the others do. We can nest tags inside of each other. We have the head section, and each web page will have a head section, which has information about the page. In this case, we have it telling the computer what type of character setting we're using. And we're also setting this up so we could do responsive design by setting the width to the device that's accessing the page. So it would adjust somewhat to whether the device accessing the page were a phone, a tablet, or a computer screen. We're going to add a title with our name. And that closes out the head section. The title, if I want to test this, I can reveal in File Explorer. When we open it, you'll see that this is where the title appears, is at the top of the screen in the tab. I'm going to keep that open. I've got a second monitor so that we can test. Now the body of the page is where the information that appears on the screen is going to go. And we're going to work with the H1 tag. That's the most important heading. And again, we're going to put our name in here. And so I typed H1 and I hit tab and that puts in both the opening and the closing tag for me. I'm going to save. Control S, and then I can refresh, and you can see that it appears here on the page. I'm just tossing that down to my third monitor. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some content to the page. So we're going to add an H2 tag, which is a less important tag. And we're going to put something about one of our hobbies or interests. And I like photography. You could have any video game, whatever you're interested in, reading, drawing, sports, something that you like. And then you're going to add a paragraph tag with three or four sentences about your hobby. So I have actually provided you with 
the photo I took that I'm going to be using, or you can go out to Pixabay or use one of your own photos, but you will need to add a photo. So I don't, ha this isn't really long. I'm only putting in a couple, three, four sentences. Something that you should know is that if I put in, if I hit enter here, that's not going to change the way it appears on the screen. So I'm going to save this, control S. I'm going to refresh, that's this circle here, or the F5 key on your keyboard. And you can see that my H2 tag and my paragraph tag work here. Now, notice that even though I hit enter here, that doesn't change the layout here. If I wanted a new line at that breakpoint, I could put in a break tag. And that makes the line wrap. If I wanted it to have a space between it, when you close a paragraph tag, and then I'm going to put a new opening paragraph here. This should actually be part of that second paragraph. So once I save it, I can refresh it, and you can see this is put in another paragraph. On the web, paragraphs put blank lines between them. Now we're going to add an image. We have to have the image in our folder before we can link to it. So I've provided you with one, or you can use one of your own, or you can go out to Pixabay, which is a site that I like that has free royalty free images or your teacher can provide a different one for you. So this is one of the photos I took. I'm going to save image as and put it in and I'm going to call it contact. This cat was an outdoor cat. We named him Jar Jar Slinks. That is the first time he and my son made contact and we adopted him and he lives in Arizona with my son now. So now we can add that to our web page through code. So in here, and Emmett makes this easier for us, the code for adding an image is IMG and then we have to put in the source file. And the source file is contact. And when we start typing it, it sees it here, it comes up. Ginger striped tabby cat. And I have added a few plugins here that you can do that make this work better for me. The extensions are right here. And the extensions that I've added are Code Spell Checker. And then I also used something called Prettier, which lets me format the page. That's not as important. But Spell Checker, you probably want to add. All you have to do is look up Code Spell Checker. And then you can install where I have uninstall, and then it'll just work. So this is the whole first page that you would create. Now, the image I gave you was small and formatted for the web. If you didn't bring in one that is small, you can set the size here by doing width equals 300. And I'm going to save this. And I don't know what I have this formatted to. So you can see it got slightly smaller. So if yours is too big, just add the width. Now I have a web page. And you can actually print these as a PDF. So I'm going to right click and print. Or I could have used Control P. I'm going to save it as an Adobe PDF file. I'm going to hit print. 
and I'm going to hand that in. If your instructor wants you to, you can also hand in just the HTML file so that they can see the code. The image won't come up unless it is sent with it, which is why I had you do the PDF.